Hello and welcome. Today on ATPL Theory we're going to be talking about the centre of gravity and mass and the effect it has on the aircraft. So what is centre of gravity first of all? Well centre of gravity is the point at which the weight is acting vertically, i.e. towards the centre of the earth and it's the point at which all those forces on the aircraft act through a single point, i.e. the point of balance. If you could balance an aircraft on your finger and it would stay balanced, it is that point at which it stays balanced. Now on an aircraft there's a forward and an aft limit for the centre of gravity. It has to be within limits. This is why we do our mass and balance calculations before we leave on a flight. If the centre of balance was all the way at the nose uh, or all the way at the tail, then the aircraft wouldn't be able to fly. The manufacturer designates a range. Now the centre of gravity is not a fixed point. It can vary. It can even vary within flight as you burn fuel. This is why a lot of larger aircraft, on long haul aircraft especially, uh, they can actually move fuel from one tank to another to change the centre of gravity in flight as they're burning fuel and their mass is becoming less. So what happens if the centre of gravity is forward or aft? Well, it changes various characteristics of the aircraft, which we're going to talk about now. Now, the two examples I've given is if the centre of gravity is on the aft limit or on the forward limit. So on the aft limit would be the bum of the aircraft is heavy, it has a heavy tail, and if the centre of gravity is on the forward limit, it has a very heavy nose. So, how is it going to affect stability? Well, if you think about an arrow flying through the air after being launched from a bow, it has a very heavy nose, the tip. This gives it very good stability through the air. This can be good, it can also be bad. So, stability. Aft, it's not very stable. Forward, it's very stable. An example of an aircraft which has a benefit for being unstable would be a fighter, for example. You want a fighter to be very maneuverable. Stability is essentially the opposite of maneuverability. If an aircraft is too stable, it's very hard to move, it's got a very heavy nose. Uh, this also affects the stick force. These top three are all interrelated. If an aircraft is very stable, it has a forward centre of gravity, it's also going to have a very heavy nose. That is what the stick force is referring to, how heavy the aircraft feels. If it has a very heavy nose, it's going to feel very heavy to rotate, very heavy to manoeuvre in flight. However, if the centre of gravity is aft, it's going to feel very light because it's going to have a very light nose. This brings us on to manoeuvrability. If it has a very light nose, it's going to be very easy to maneuver. It's going to be very twitchy even. A jet fighter would have an aft center of gravity on purpose to destabilize it, to make it very maneuverable. And vice versa, if an aircraft has a forward center of gravity, it's going to have a high stick force. It's going to be very hard to move that yoke and the maneuverability is going to be reduced. So that brings us on to a different point. Let's think about drag. This is one of the ones where guys get a little more confused. Why is an aft center of gravity good? Most airlines, most aircraft for that matter, tend to have a centre of gravity slightly aft. A centre of gravity aft is actually going to affect the drag by reducing it, and less drag is good. Why is the centre of gravity aft reducing the drag? Well, if we pull that centre of gravity aft, it's going to inherently bring the nose up a little bit, which is going to mean that we are going to require less angle of attack generated by the wing surfaces themselves, which creates less drag. So it's inherently sat at the right angle to cruise. In the aircraft I fly, in a cruise, you'll see the nose between three to five degrees nose up. If the center of gravity is aft and is in the right place aft, then that five degrees to maintain the altitude will be done automatically without any wing surface. The elevator especially can be very clean, creating less drag. To illustrate the difference between a slightly forward center of gravity and a slightly aft center of gravity, and the effect it has on the drag of the aircraft. I'll show you this little drawing. So we can see with this drawing, the center of gravity indicated by the red bar is creating a movement or a force down the way and lift is counteracting that force. So we have lift of the main wing, also lift off the elevator. Now lift off the elevator can be up or down. If the center of gravity is forward, you can see the elevator is going to have to generate a down force to balance the aircraft. However, if the center of gravity is slightly behind that center of pressure or the, or the lift force there, you can see the elevator is going to have to generate lift up the way to balance the aircraft. Now that is in level flight. However, we don't fly with the nose on the horizon. We need to fly slightly nose up. So as you can see there, if we decrease the lift on the elevator, the weight of that center of gravity there is just going to pull the plane up slightly. That means that the elevator is now generating very little drag, so that is why an aft center of gravity is slightly beneficial. Now, if I click my fingers again, I hope you've understood that. Now that brings us on to stall speed and rotation speed. Let's talk about the rotation speed first of all, because it's nice and easy to realize. If we have an aft center of gravity, the rotation speed is going to be slower. 
it's going to, uh, it's going to be easier to rotate. It's going to want to lift off the ground first, again, because it has that nose up tendency. And the stall speed is also going to reduce because it's going to have a natural tendency to sit at a higher angle of attack, giving it more lift. Now, range. This is essentially related to drag. If we have less drag, we are inherently going to have more range and less fuel consumption. So why do we have more range? Because we have less drag. So it's consuming less fuel and it has more range. But lastly, let's talk about the effect of mass on an aircraft. Now, if we increase the mass of an aircraft, it's going to have various negative effects. So let's first talk about V-speeds. Now, V-speeds are all increased with an increased mass. Now, bear with me on V1. I'll explain that in a minute because it's very counterintuitive. VR, the speed at which we rotate, is going to increase, of course, because we're going to need more speed, more lift to lift that weight. So our VR is going to be later. Our minimum stick speed, of course, is going to be greater. And our stall speed is going to be greater. A lighter aircraft is very hard to stall. A heavy one is much easier to stall. So that speed comes up. Now, V1, counterintuitively, is higher with a higher growth weight. This is because V1 is the decision speed and it's normally only based on the ASDA, the accelerate stop distance required, or the field length, rarely limited by weight. The V1 will increase with the VR to allow that decision to be taken later, as long, of course, as it's not performance limited in any way. As long as we still have enough brake energy to stop the aircraft and enough runway, the V1 will increase with the VR increase. The increased V1 still gives an adequate margin, safety margin, to stop the aircraft if the takeoff should be aborted. However, it allows us to take that decision later as we are traveling faster. The best option always for takeoff is for V1 and VR to be almost the same. Uh, V1 cannot be above VR, but it can be equal. This is because you want to take that decision to reject the takeoff as late as possible. The more margin you have, the better. So that increase in V1 is actually a good thing. It gives us more time, as long as we're not performance limited in any way, more time to make that decision to stop, to reject the takeoff. Now, if we increase mass, the takeoff run and landing distance required, of course, are always going to be larger. We have more mass to stop, more mass to take off. We're going to need greater speeds on both those situations. Range and endurance is going to decrease. Why? A greater mass requires greater angle of attack, which generates more drag, and hence the range and endurance decrease. The maximum speed and the maximum altitude also decrease because performance is decreased. It cannot overcome that extra drag that's being created from the extra angle of attack needed to maintain that weight in the air, so it cannot travel at its max speed anymore, and it can't climb as far anymore because the engines just won't let it. Rate of descent, of course, is going to be greatly increased, something you have to be very careful with in descent management. Oppositely to that, of course, the rate of climb is going to be decreased. This can be bad, especially uh, in a one engine, missed approach, you may not make the climb gradients required for the missed approach, obstacle clearance, all these kind of things that have to be taken into account. Fuel consumption is going to increase, that's relating to the range and endurance. We have more drag, so the fuel consumption is going to increase. It creates more structural fatigue, more weight, more structural fatigue. Harder landings, possibly. That all leads into bigger tire wear and bigger brake energy required to stop the aircraft. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson on center of gravity and mass. If you like this video, please like, share, subscribe. All the best, till next time.